boys and girls. I'm Miss Kathy, and I want to welcome you to Carolina Camp Meeting for Kids. I'm glad you decided to join me for this, and I hope you have a fun week learning more about God. While well, you have some fun too, of course. I like to cook in the kitchen, and I brought some things with me. I brought lentils and salt and onion, garlic, cumin, oregano and thyme, my measuring, and my oil, at least to get me started. You know, I really like to cook, as I said. I like to make delicious recipes. And one of my favorite recipes is lentil pottage from the Bible Lands. When I make this recipe, I want to make sure that I have all the ingredients. So as you see, I've put them here together. And if I want that to taste just right, I have to make sure that they're all available to me. As I've made this recipe over time, I've added a few things to it to make it even taste better. One of my friends came up with the idea of using lentils with rice, cottage cheese, lettuce, tomatoes, and you could add cucumbers, parsley, or cilantro, a kind of Middle Eastern haystack. Did you know that God also made you a special recipe? He made no one else on the planet just like you. You are special. He's given you all kinds of gifts and talents, and He has a special purpose and plan for your life. He knows exactly what He wants to do with you, and your job and my job is to find out what that is that God wants to do with us. That's God's will. So that's our special mission. To get started with this adventure this week, I want to encourage you to agree to have Jesus, to have God, be in your hearts, to show you the way by saying yes to Jesus. So I invite you to do that, to invite him to be in your heart and to be with you, not only today, but every day of your life. You can do that by praying to him. You know, God is ready to show you his will, and it's a matter of just paying attention. This week, our theme is doing God's will. And with God's blessing, I've written a little song to help us remember some of the things that God wants us to do that are His will. And I hope you enjoy singing it. I'll give you a little listen right now. And as you get it more encouraged with the words and you know the words better, then you may join in as well. God wants me to love Him first. God wants me to love my neighbor. God wants me to be a friend. By showing love, I'm doing God's will. God wants me to cheer the sad. God wants me to feed the hungry. God wants me to help the poor. By serving them, I'm doing God's will. God wants me to do justly. God wants me to love mercy. God wants me to walk with Him. By following Him, I'm doing God's will. I'd like to invite you to pray with me. So let's bow our heads. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you that you love us so much. And we know that our job is to love you first and best and most. Please help us to learn that today. Help us to learn each day to say yes to Jesus. We ask you to be with us and to bless our time together. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we love you. Amen. So today, boys and girls, we're going to be learning a memory verse. It's Proverbs 3, verse 6, and we're going to do it in two parts. So today we'll just learn the first part using sign language. So the first word, the words in this version of the Bible are, Seek God's will in all you do. Here's for seek. Seek God's will in all you do. Let's try that again. Seek God's will in all you do. So that's as much as we're going to do for today. Tomorrow we'll add a little bit more. This year, for our special ADRA Mission Project offering, I would like to invite you to do God's will by loving your neighbors, children just like you, from all over the world. You can be a hero to someone else by providing something that they really need. I can also tell you that you will be happy you did something to make someone else happy. I want to encourage you to ask your parents or grandparents or guardians to help you raise $5 or more if you want to by doing special jobs that they give you to do. 
You could give up asking for something that you really want, such as soda, candy, or a toy. You could help to clean up your yard or room or help with other jobs around home, such as washing the car or weeding around the flowers in your garden. Whatever it is, find something that you can do that will help you raise at least $5. Then, along with your parent, grandparent, or guardian, go to www.adra, that's ADRA, dot o-r-g and click on kids gift catalog in there you will find seven gifts that you may give to help other children when you make a purchase on their website a free downloadable coloring sheet will be available for you to print off and color so today we're going to talk about our there are going to be two gifts that i share with you for today the first one is chickens can you imagine your whole family living on just one dollar and fifty cents a day you can probably find that much change hidden between your sofa cushions right now. There are many reasons that families must survive on so little, but you can make things easier by choosing this gift. Chickens and their eggs can be sold at the market, so families have more money for food, clothes, and other necessities. The other gift that we have is this one about school, and I guess I better turn it right side up. You can equip a student Education is essential for kids' futures and ADRA believes that all children everywhere need to be in school. But they also need basic school supplies. Your gift of backpacks filled with pencils, notebooks, and more will give kids some of the tools to be successful students. Many families have very little money to provide for their needs and the needs of their children. By giving money to help them buy chickens, you may help families to have money to provide for their needs. Also, the quality of life for a child improves as they learn to read, write, and learn many other skills by going to school. It is important to have the tools needed to get an education. You may go right now to www.adra.org to find the kids' gift catalog. Decide what special gift you want to give, then set to work earning money to bless other children and their families. You will be happy you did. The Test The prisoners moved in a long line, hearing the continuous clank of chains as they wearily walked across the burning sand of the desert. Daniel felt the heat of the midday sun as it beat down upon him. His throat felt parched, how much he wanted a drink of water. As Daniel walked along, he thought back over events that had happened since he and his friends had been taken prisoner in Jerusalem. King Jehoiakim had done evil in the sight of God, and King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon had come to Jerusalem, surrounded it, and captured it. God had allowed Jehoiakim to be taken in bronze chains to Babylon along with Daniel and his friends, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah, and others who were part of a group of the royal family and the nobility of Judah. Nebuchadnezzar had also taken some of the treasured items from the temple of the Lord with him to place in the temple of his god Marduk. As Daniel plodded along, out of the shimmering desert haze, the distant buildings of the great city of Babylon began to take shape. Catching sight of the city, the pace of the soldiers quickened, and they urged their captives to move more rapidly over the sandy dunes toward the city. With a sense of urgency, Daniel moved along, wondering what would become of him and the other prisoners once they entered Babylon. When the prisoners arrived in Babylon, hot, dusty, and tired from traveling, they were given food and water, allowed to clean up and put on fresh clothing. Then they were assembled before Ashpenaz, the chief of staff for King Nebuchadnezzar. The prisoners stood quietly, waiting to find out what they were to do next. Through an interpreter, Ashpenaz announced in a loud voice, You will all be tested to find out what skills and learning ability you have in order to prepare you for service to the king. If you are chosen, then you will be assigned to a special school where you will learn the language and literature of Babylon for three years. Each day, you will be given a daily amount of the best food and wine in Babylon, right from the king's own table. After your three years of study are completed, you will enter into the service of the king. 
Daniel and his three friends were among those chosen from the tribe of Judah. Ashpenaz gave them Babylonian names. Daniel was given the name of Belteshazzar. Hananiah was named Shadrach. Mishael was named Meshach. And Azariah was given the name of Abednego. Now Daniel and his friends had been brought up in a home where they learned to love God, study His Word, and respect His law. They had been taught to pray three times a day facing toward the temple in Jerusalem. They also learned how to live healthfully by drinking water and eating vegetables and other good foods that would help them to be strong and keep clear minds so they could learn to know and do God's will. Daniel and his friends were concerned because eating the king's food would not make them be strong and healthy. Drinking the king's wine would make their minds cloudy and would affect their ability to have good judgment. They discussed among themselves what they should do. As Daniel considered this, he was also faced with the thought of how to follow the God of heaven in a foreign land where gods made of gold, silver, wood, and stone were worshipped. His mind quickly made up. He quietly stated to his friends, I have decided that no matter what, I will be faithful to do God's will and will not defile myself by eating the king's food and wine. Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah agreed with him. With a prayer in his heart, Daniel went to see Ashpenaz to ask permission to not eat the king's foods and drink his wine. Now, though God had made Ashpenaz feel respect and sympathy for Daniel, the king's chief of staff said, I am afraid of my lord the king, who has ordered that you eat this food and wine. If you become pale and thin compared to the other young men of your age, I am afraid the king will have me beheaded. So Daniel went to speak with the attendant that had been assigned by Ashpenaz to look after Daniel and his friends. He said, Please test us for ten days on a diet of vegetables and water. At the end of ten days, see how we look compared to the other young men who are eating the king's food. Then make your decision based on what you see. The attendant agreed with his idea and gave them the food they requested. When all of the young men were called together at the end of ten days, Daniel and his three friends looked healthier and better nourished than any of those who ate the king's food. After this, Daniel and his friends were fed the diet of vegetables and water instead of the king's food. God honored the faithfulness of Daniel Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah by giving them the ability to learn the language and literature of Babylon with great wisdom and understanding. In addition, God gave Daniel special abilities to interpret the meaning of dreams and visions. When the three years of learning were completed, Ashpenaz brought all the young men who had been trained to King Nebuchadnezzar for examination. As the king talked with each of the young men, he was most impressed with Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. In fact, none of the other young men could equal them in knowledge. So they entered the service of King Nebuchadnezzar, and whenever he would consult them, the king found that they were ten times wiser than all of the magicians and enchanters in the kingdom of Babylon. Boys and girls, the Bible says, God is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to His power that is at work within us. It also says, If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Daniel and his friends knew God as their friend. They had studied God's word, talked to Him daily in prayer, and wanted to do His will. They believed that God was with them and that He would help them to do His will even though they were in a foreign land. I'm sure they talked a lot with God over those ten days when they were eating vegetables and drinking water instead of eating the king's food and wine. God blessed their efforts to honor Him by not only giving them strong bodies, but strong minds. When you study the Bible, pray and choose to do God's will, He will bless you beyond your imagination. Take care of your body, mind, and soul, and God will give you exactly what you need in order to do what He wants you to do. Hi, boys and girls. I'm Miss Kathy, here with you again to do something with outdoors activities 
outdoor gardening or hands-on gardening. I love using my hands and I love getting them into the dirt and working with uh, plants and so I thought that might be something fun for you to do, something a little different than what we usually do at camp meeting when we're together. So I'd like to just mention a few things before we really get into uh, specifics. I want to mention a few things about what you really need to do gardening. You need some good soil. Here we have potting mix, but if you happen to have a yard that you have a lot of space for a garden, it's great if you can be able to um, fix the soil that is enrich it and uh, use things like manure or other things to help or compost. You can recycle some of your food scraps that you don't eat or need anymore and you can recycle those and put some worms in there to really help it break down and put it in the dirt to make it nice and rich. It's important for you to have certain ingredients. You need good soil. You need a place, you need to have it so that the soil is loosened up so oxygen can get in there and help things to grow and be healthier. You need worms and that's, worms are great for helping to keep the, the soil nice and loose. You need sunshine. You need sunshine often. If we have rain all the time, everything's going to get soggy and that's what's been happening here. Um, we have rain a good bit. Uh, water is very important though. Water is very important because if you don't have water, things are not going to live. So that's another important ingredient. It's important in your pots to make sure that they have good drainage on the bottom, that there's a, a hole or a, a dish underneath to catch excess water so that they don't um, get too wet. Uh, it's important to also keep in mind to protect your plants. Uh, I think I mentioned earlier about slugs and snails. They can be a problem and there are other uh, creatures that can get in the way and cause trouble for your plants and eat them up. Japanese beetles are another one that I have trouble with my roses sometimes. Bees are very important. If we didn't have bees, we wouldn't be able to have plants and we wouldn't be able to eat vegetables and fruits and things like that. They are so important and so that's why we need to especially watch out for the bees and try to take care of them. Well, you know, I'm telling you these things and you think, well, what does that have to do with camp meeting and spiritual life? Well, guess what? We need things to enrich our lives too or we aren't going to be very healthy. I know lately I think I've watered, over watered a few plants and some of them are looking a little bit droopy because of it. So it's important. You need water. You need the water of life. You need Jesus to give you um, the nourishment, the thirst that you, you need. You need good soil. Uh, one of the good things that we need to do is read our Bible. We need to pray. Those things can enrich our lives just like the soil is enriched. So those are some things. And then, of course, we need sunshine. Not just the outdoor sunshine, but the sunshine of Jesus. So those things can help. He can help us and help us to grow. If we don't have him, we don't grow. So there are just a few things I want to reference. I mentioned potting soil. Over here, I have these um, pots. Like I mentioned, it's good if they have drainage. Now this one doesn't happen to, and so you need to be careful about watering. But some of these, you know, these nice lightweight plastic ones are good. You can get harder ones as well. Um, but if you don't have money to go and get, these weren't very expensive at Walmart, but if you don't have money, you can always use the bottom of, here, this one's an orange juice bottle. This one is for spring water. You can use something like that and cut those. And um, it's good when you do have plants that have drainage holes like these pots here, you can use these plastic pans under them if you don't have the brick kind. Another way you can start your seeds is to use peat pots and you can get these at the hardware uh, nursery section of your hardware and you can start plants in these and then once they grow enough then you can put them right in the ground or you know um, you can even start potatoes or other things other small plants just inside your egg carton so there's all kinds of fun things you can do this is just a few of those fun things very important thing that you have a watering can or a hose to keep uh, you know, with you so that you can keep things watered. And to loosen the soil, you want something that will help you to open it up and loosen it up when you're planting seeds. So those are just a few things that you need. Um, earlier we were talking about uh, markers. Um, you can put in markers to mark your plants. That's very important. And um, if you are in an area where you have a larger garden, mulch can somehow can be very helpful to keeping down the, um, the weeds that come up. You know, we see weeds, they just keep coming, they don't stop, and so it's a constant battle. And um, so that's something, mulch works, pine needles work, some of those things. Well today we're going to talk about some of the um, herbs that are in our lives. By the way, um, I almost forgot, 
having a few protective things like a hat when it's sunny and um, some gloves for your hands. They make some great ones for kid size. Those really help to protect your hands so you don't get your fingers all um, hurting from the things that poke, that can poke you or dirt in your fingernails. Make sure that you keep those clean. All right, so let's talk just a little bit about mint. Mint is just one of the herbs I want to focus on today. My favorite kind of tea has mint in it. And I have one at home that um, has a mixture of all kinds of different things in it, but it has mint in there as well. And here I have a peppermint, a peppermint tea bag. And you know, it's cool because I can, I can put hot water in this and then pour it right in, in the teacup. So herbs are really good for flavoring and um, you can use them in all kinds of things. This particular plant right here is a peppermint plant or a mint plant. And um, my husband picked one up already grown in the store and it has grown and done really well in the winter time. It's a great winter time plant. One thing you need to do though is if you don't want it to spread out like what's done, what's happened here, um, you need to make sure you put it in a pot because otherwise it'll spread across the ground. The other day when I was taking this part out, I discovered more plants growing on these long, what they call stolons, these little um, runners in the ground so they can really spread. But I'm gonna tell you, if you just need to freshen your mouth a little bit, just pluck, up, pluck off one of these and stick it in and boy, does it taste good. In fact, I know probably every one of you every day brush your teeth, at least I hope so. That's very important to care for your teeth. And um, you use spearmint or you use peppermint or some kind of flavor that goes with it. It's interesting in history, um, I was reading in a book that I have here, this is a great book, Gardening for Kids, Gardening Wizardry for Kids, and it tells all kinds of things that are fun. And I, like I said, I have other books that are great too. But um, in here, it mentions some of the uses long time ago for mint. Mint, in, you know, before modern medicine, mint was considered a very important plant in every herb doctor's pharmacy. Mint was used to treat watery eyes, bad memory, headaches, sore gums, gassy stomach, bad breath, bee stings, bad dreams, and dandruff. Well, I'm not sure it helped all of those things, but um, that's what they used it for. Mint does contain vitamin A and C plus calcium and riboflavin. So it might have helped where a lack of vitamins was the basic problem. So that's just a little bit about the interesting history of mint. Now, some of you also may know at Christmas time, we have candy canes. And it is said that in eight, around 1870, I believe it was, there was a candy maker in Indiana who uh, came up with the idea of the candy cane. If you put it up like this, it is like a shepherd's staff, but if you turn it around the other way, it's like the letter J for Jesus. And the different stripes represent um, Jesus' sacrifice for us, and um, so there's just some really neat things with that. Well, today I wanna to mention just a few more things that um, I like right here. This is the lavender plant. Lavender is supposed to be restful to you when you sleep, um, and it really smells good when you rub the these um, leaves a little bit. And this one right here is rosemary. Rosemary is great in cooking. I know it's great for Italian food. Um, by the way, here's the lavender package. They turn out beautiful with purple flowers as they grow bigger. This is one that you have to have a little more space for if you wanna be able to have the benefit of the flowers. I enjoy, when I make pizza at home, I like to use sweet basil, fresh sweet basil um, sometimes. And I use um, oregano or I sprinkle dried oregano. Here's a, an example that, you know, of oregano. So those are some things I use on pizza to help uh, besides olives and mushrooms and things like that that I really enjoy. When I eat Mexican food, I really, whether it's burritos or just, you know, if, you, if I have some for Haystack, I like to put cilantro on. And cilantro has a very um, pungent odor and taste. It's really good. Then another one, and I brought some from my garden. This is another great winter winter um, plant, herb that you can use, and this is parsley. This is another one that's good for um, putting on, like if you have a roast or a, you have something with spaghetti. And um, kids, I wanna encourage you, get in the kitchen with your mom and dad, make some fun recipes, and use something that you might wanna to want to grow. Um, I was going to tell you that if you put this in your mouth, it's also a very, it's, it's tasty. Mm. 
And there's all kinds of good things that God has made for us to enjoy. So I hope that with the materials list that we put out, you'll go and whether it's with that or you go over to the hardware store or to Walmart, go get some seeds and start to plant a, an herb or a couple of herbs that you can keep in your home. You can use them all year round or if you put them outdoors, you can enjoy them out there. Hope you have fun and definitely check out the mint tea. It's really good. Hi, boys and girls. I'm glad to welcome you to Fun with Art. And since we are doing a section on gardening, then we thought we would uh, put some of the things together that would work well with that. One of the things that's fun to do is to make your marker so you know what it is that you are working on to grow. For instance, lettuce or peas or maybe sunflowers or corn. And you can do all kinds of things. This is just one idea. You may come up with some others, but this is, we'll do one just to give you a demonstration. Remember that you should always have a plastic uh, over your table or work area so that you don't make a big mess for your parents to have to clean up or you to clean up. And if you're painting, it's good to wear something to cover up. For this one, you won't need to. So I thought I would make one for carrots today. So I'm going to take a piece of green foam and orange foam and put that together to make a carrot. And you know, a carrot's on the top, they have an area, they have green leaves on the top that stick up. And so I'm doing that and then I'll cut it out. And then I'm going to draw a carrot. And remember carrots are long and thin at the, the bottom, they point at the bottom. And so I'm going to cut those out and I'm going to glue them as soon as I get this put together. I'll glue them on the top of our stick. Now these sticks are larger than usual. You can get them at Home Depot. Um, they have them in a package that way, so you can get those. And they do have smaller ones that are tongue depressors at um, Michael's or one of the craft stores. So that's something else to keep in mind. But if you like these, these are big ones, so bigger than usual. You can also use popsicle sticks. Those are a little smaller, so you can't do as much with pictures or putting things together like this as you would. All right, so I've got my top and I've got my carrot. And um, there's one thing I forgot, and that is I'm going to make a top part here, cut out a little square, and I need to even it out a bit. And I'm going to first glue that, uh, glue, put that there, and then glue the carrot on it. I'm actually gonna turn it around this way. And I'll put the carrot on. Let's see if I can get the glue to come out. I need to open it up. And I'll put the carrot on. And then I'm going to put the top. Where did the top go? Oh, there it is, it was hiding. And one challenge with this is when you use marker, it gets on your fingers and it kind of makes a mess. So you probably can see my dirty fingers, but that's just part of what goes with art. All right, so I've got my carrot, and I'm going to glue it on the top part of the stick. And of course, it's good to let these dry for a while before you take them outside to use, because they do get a little bit messy um, if they haven't had a chance to dry. And then to, to finish it off, I want to write the name on the wood. Now I notice also that when you use marker, it kind of bleeds a little bit, but um, you still can get the idea. Carrots are something that are delicious and good for you, so there you go. Hi boys and girls, I'm so glad that you could join us for Carolina Camp Meeting for Kids. Let's close with a word of prayer for this day. Let's bow our heads. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you for being with us today. Thank you for teaching us God's will, for helping us to learn what it is that you want us to do. You want us to love you first and best and most. You want us to love you with all our heart and mind and soul and strength. You want us to love our neighbor and to be friends to others. You want us to cheer those who are sad, to feed the hungry, and to help the poor. You want us to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly beside you. Lord, help us to do that. We pray that you would bless us as we go through this day and help us to remember 
to do your will with your power. We love you and thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. See you tomorrow.